said times in his rhymes cause his memories We running through New York so you never leave Shut my lungs then we puff until we're that right We're giving them some stories they come back like Manic this, manic that, why you crawling to me? The hell we gonna... Okay guys, welcome back to the channel And today we're back with the S85 again Because since I've got this car I've been having a misfire constantly on cylinder 5 Now nobody's been able to diagnose it Everyone, when they own this car, want to replace all the coils, the spark plugs, thinking that was the issue. Now, that's not the issue on these. What a lot of people ain't aware is there's something else that actually controls the electricity to the coil for the spark. The spark plugs on these engines are actually just a sensor. The way BMW laid out this engine is very, very clever. And there's something else that actually controls the whole spark and angle of the timing, especially for the Vanos and everything else on this car which a lot of people ain't aware of they always get a misfire on one cylinder and nobody can diagnose it they'll tell you it's an injector they'll tell you it's this they'll tell you it's that because they actually can't find the actual problem so today i'm going to show you what the actual problem is and where it lies if you're getting a misfire under on literally one cylinder constantly and your car keeps cutting power and going into reduced limp mode this will be your issue a lot of people ain't even aware of it you can reset it sometimes it comes sometimes it goes sometimes it's fine but this that's when it's on its way out and then the best thing to do is to replace both sets, which I'm going to be doing on this car because I just believe it's better to do that than just replace the one. Because if one's out, the other one's out. You guys know me, I replace everything in pairs. So that's what we're going to do here. So I'm going to show you how to get to the part and I'm going to show you what the part is. So we're just going to take off all the air books. That's going to be the first one. Move that out of the way. <clears throat> then we're going to the air box. And we're just going to push this back out of the way. So I just want you to see right here this cover. This cover here is what we're going to be removing. And you're going to see when we remove that cover. Now, when a lot of people go on the forums, I've realized one thing is that nobody knows anything that's going on with people's cars. <clears throat> so what we're doing here is I'm just trying to nail the problem down. So what we're going to do quickly is we're going to switch these over to the other. So this one's already been a common problem. You can see it right away. So you want to lift up your connector and move it out of the way. This one's already been replaced once in its life. So all the, all the Allen key bolts are missing. So I'm going to get an Allen key bolt. And this is the control unit for the coils, spark plugs, Vanos, everything. And these fail. And a lot of people run around like headless chickens not knowing where to actually look to find these because they're hidden away and everyone just checks the basic things before checking these. So we're just gonna release the Allen key bolts <coughs> that hold this on. And then we're gonna just take the unit out, the control unit. And as you see, it's got the wires and clips in. Then what we're going to do is switch this over to the other side. So we're going to take out the other side now, guys. And this is the unit right here that ends up failing. This little unit that controls, which causes all everyone's misfires. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to switch the lever to the other side. We're just going to release all the math as well on here. Take that one out. And we're just going to take... Slip this one off. Put that one off under the clips on the airbox. Take the airboxes out. Do remember when you start the car, put your mouse back in. Because the car won't start. That's the only thing you need to do. Now a lot of people would run around, as I said, thinking it's your math sensor and this and that and the other. But that's just not the case. You try and hold on to all the bolts you don't want to lose them as your covers will be exposed so now we're going to do is take that one out and as i said this one's been had out as well there we 
but then we seem to have two bolts in them. Quite shocking. So now that one's out. I'm going to take the unit out again. Move that out of the way. And as you'll see, we're just going to switch them out. So we're going to put this one right here. And we're just going to see, put plug that in. Nice and tight. And we're going to leave that like that. And then we're going to plug the other one up here from the other side. So we've got that all plugged in. Now we're just going to reconnect our maths and our air holes here so we can stop the car at least. Make sure you keep your maths separate because one thing I've realised on this engine especially is that the maths are so walky. They like to just go and do their own thing. on now we're going to go and do start the car and see if it moves over on the misfire so let's go and find out okay guys so as you can hear the engines running at this point in time I'm just waiting for it to start misfiring it takes a long time it's got to temperature to be running on the sensors fully before it starts missing. It's therefore running fine at the moment, this is what it does on a cold start. And then all of a sudden, once it gets hot, leaving it idling five to 10 minutes like this, it will start misfiring. And then I'm gonna come back on the camera and I'm gonna show you exactly what it does. So I can show you what the cause is and this is how you'll know. Now, I've already always got the scanner plugged up. I've cleared the code from the cylinder five misfire. I will rescan it again when it misfires and we're gonna see if the cylinder moves to number 10 now because it was on number five on that side. But this one was throwing it a light for cylinder eight as well, which is actually the coils that the guy actually replaced, um, which I've got a seat in there for. So these could have been failing for a long time and nobody would have just known. So what I am doing is I'm waiting for this to misfire and then we're gonna see if it moved over. Cylinder eight wasn't too common, but as I said, I'm gonna replace them both anyway, because if I do I'll just replace the one, knowing my luck, the other ones will come and give you a misfire later on and we don't want that because we'll be back in reduced power in limp mode again. So it's therefore better to replace both the two fully working ones I can buy them for around £50 on eBay, so they're not even expensive. They're only $300 to buy them, actually brand new, so for these controllers, you've got to think that's very cheap. So therefore, I am gonna replace the both of them and be done with, because I don't want this ever come back again. But at the moment, it's idling fine, but we're just gonna wait and it should start misfiring, and then we'll go ahead and scan it. Okay guys, so we're back, and it was what I thought it was. The misfire has moved from now cylinder five over to cylinder 10, which is this unit, which is the one I did move over from there. And now we finally find the culprit, this unit is completely bad, so I'm gonna go ahead and replace them both, because they both need replacing, but I'm so happy that it is this control unit, because now the misfire's gone over to this side. And I think this is why the last owner replaced all the coils, five, six, eight, and 10, thinking it was the coils and the plugs. He replaced all the plugs, so he done me a favor when you think, guys, think about it, because I've done everything else, as well as the coolant change and the belts. Um, we've done everything on this car so far. So I just have to replace the control units. They're not cheap. This is a problem that's very, very overlooked because they're hidden underneath these cases so people don't see them. They just see that, which is the coils. They don't think this is any part of the engine. But we have managed to track it down, managed to diagnose it. So now what we're gonna do is um, we're just gonna fit new ones and get this car back running perfectly again. So I'm gonna get onto that and we're gonna fit the new parts as well. I'm glad I found out it was this control unit that was at fault. But again, as I said, I'm replacing both. And if you guys do have a single misfire, this is the best way to tell. Don't think it's your calls, don't think it's your plugs. I know a lot of you would be running around like a headless chicken and then think it's your ejector, thinking it's your fuel pump, thinking it's this. These control units are responsible for the voltage to the ignition coils. Without these control units, you will have no voltage to one of them. And it's a known fact that they fail only on one cylinder. Um, sometimes even all five, sometimes even just two. But check these control units because they're the one cause that causes these misfires. Okay guys, so what we're gonna go ahead and do now is just replace them. I've got the replacement parts here. These come from a used M6. The same thing, these don't need coding, they don't need programming, they're just straight plug and play. 
The guy said they're working, he's given me warranty of them. So we'll find out now if the problem goes away when we put these on. So we're gonna put two new ones. Like I said, that one ain't bad, so we're gonna keep that one as a spare, but I am replacing both. Because as you guys know, I don't replace ones and then have to go and buy another one. I want this car running perfectly. So that's what we're gonna be doing. Like I said, the old owner must have neglected it and it must have been running like this for a very long time, which could have actually harmed the engine. So luckily it didn't. So therefore, I am gonna go ahead and replace both and I'm gonna get them back off now and just um, put these two on. So what you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and do guys is you're just gonna to wanna to follow the cable. So for instance, this is the one for this side, so we're gonna put this one on. I'm just gonna unplug this one right now. And we're just gonna put the other one back on. This one, clip it back down. Make sure it's clipped down properly. And I'm just gonna bolt that back here, put the cable back in this clip. Now with these, as you, what you're gonna to wanna to do is follow the cover. Now you see here, it's got the two holes here. So when you put a line it up, you don't want to put it in that one and that one because them other two holes are for the bolts that are screwed to it. So we're going to go to the top here and line it. So that's one in. And then what we're going to do is go ahead and do the bottom one, which is right here as well. You want to be careful not to try and drop the bolts as well as you're putting these in because you want to tighten them up. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is tighten these up right now. Don't over tighten them because otherwise what will happen is with the heat they go stiff and you won't be able to get them out if you ever have to get them out again so do not over tighten them whatever you do then what you're going to do is get your case put it back on tuck it under the coil pack cover and then put these bolts in as well which are 10 mil that one's done as well so now what we're going to go ahead and just remove to go to the other side so you guys can see me fit the other one okay guys so now we're on this side all you're going to want to do is the same thing the bolts are already out as you guys know we're just going to disconnect this one as well we'll take that off and put this one on so we're going to keep the, put this one back on here and we're just going to bolt that up as well again being careful of where the bolts go you don't want to miss the bolts, the lemon key bolts that go in there. You want to look at the cover, the way they're going to go. So for instance, the cover on this one is that side, so one here and one there. So we're not going to put any bolts in them sides. We're going to pull it up here. This is where the bolts need to go. And you're going to put the other one down the bottom here, making sure that this one isn't too tight. That you can't get to the other one to line it up. Don't over tighten them, as I said, because you won't be able to get them out if you ever have to. Again, these are Allen key bolts, so if you do strip them out, you won't be able to um, get them out. Now we've got that case back on. Just gonna put the bolts back in, the 10 mil bolts. Line up the holes. And that one's already in. Now we're gonna put the last one in. Now that one's in. Now you see that one's in, that's the cover back on. Now we're gonna put our air boxes back on and then start the car up. So let's put the air boxes back on. Now we're gonna do the same thing for this side. Keep your mouth out of the way, otherwise it will go missing. You don't want to over tighten that one either. Be careful of that. Now we're going to plug the map on that one. Plug the intake hose on it. Go clip this one down. 
and that's the car back together and ready now what we're going to go ahead and do is start the car and see how it runs now without the misfire we're going to let it warm up then we're going to turn it off see if the misfire comes back Have it guys i've just solved the issue on the bmw s85 e60 m5 as i said to you these modules do like to fail on either one cylinder or two cylinders or sometimes they'll both fail causing it to misfire on all cylinders do not think that it won't be your ionic module and go replacing your coils first because sometimes it ends up not being the cause the cause very rarely fail a lot of people go doing that there's a lot of people out there in the forums who still believe to this day that it's their coils or they got a problem with the injector because they're not even aware these actually sit there so i hope this video is going to help you guys thank you very much for watching if you ain't subscribed already please go ahead and subscribe because we've got a lot more coming up on this engine thank you very much it's bmw dr dean here and goodbye